Hi, I'm David with Udisk here to provide you a brief intro to the Map Manager page, which is a foundational course ambassador tool from which all of your smart layouts will be derived. The first time you come to the Map Manager page, I recommend doing so on your computer, and that's just because you're going to have more screen real estate to see all of the tools at your fingertips. You'll also find this brief shepherded walkthrough tutorial, which will ask you a few quick questions to get a sense of what kind of course you are setting up. So let's hit the orange buttons to progress through this real quick. First. A complex course is defined as any course that has multiple T areas or pin positions on any given hole. It doesn't necessarily mean you have multiple T's on every hole, and even if you only have one target in place, but it rotates between a few different pin positions, that would be considered a complex course. Next, the type of tees are the actual physical material that your tee pads are made out of. If they are not actual tee pads, they're just an area in the grass marked with flags maybe, then mark it as grass. If you have some grass tees and some turf tees, that's what I'm setting up right here. If any holes, again not necessarily every hole, have multiple playable tee positions, then definitely hit yes. Or if there's only one tee on each hole, then hit no, there's only one T on each hole. And lastly, what are they actually called? Don't try to reinvent the wheel here. Just name the T's, whatever they're named on the actual course. If you'd like some suggestions of naming schemes for your T's, hit this what is a T position button. Or you can just look at the T signs if you have T signs at your course or go with whatever the locals call the T's. Target positions. This would be where the target actually is. Again, even if it is just one physical target that moves between a couple of different positions, then the answer to this question would be yes. But if all the targets are fixed and there's only one target on each hole, then you would go with no. Again, just name the targets, whatever they're named on the actual course. So if it's the gold and blue pin positions, then name them gold and blue. Another common naming scheme is A, B, C, etc. And lastly, I've been kind of getting at this, but how many playable target positions are there for each hole? Now, this would be kind of the maximum number. So if you have two targets that are playable on a couple of your holes, then the answer is two. And I mean actual physical targets that you can play to. If it's only one target and it moves between a few different areas, then the answer to this question is still one because there's only one playable target position. You're not going to throw to a basket sleeve that's in the ground but is empty with no basket in it. Targets are typically baskets, but if you also throw to tone poles or a different type of object course target, then that's what you would hit object for. So if you have a few different kinds of targets, then feel free to add all the different target types. All right, we are into the map manager page. We are gonna get cracking right now on actually setting up this map. And this is my first time in the map uh, so you'll see there's really nothing here yet. So this will be fun. First thing I want to call your attention to is the actions menu in the upper right. There are a lot of really handy tools here, so it's worth getting familiarized with this actions menu. I'm not going to be able to demonstrate every single one of these, but I am going to show you the basics here today. So let's start with adding a T position for hole one, which starts right around here. There's only one tee pad for hole one. So I'm gonna go ahead and label it both the short and long tee because there is no separate tee. So that's perfectly fine if it is just the one size fits all kind of tee. And if you need to add some more options here, you can always add, you know, the uh, the turf tee type, or if you have some uh, dirt tees, feel free to be as specific as you'd like. So we have hole one's T now, and I want to make sure this is associated with hole one, and we can even label it as dirt now because that, that is a little bit more accurate. The more accurate your map manager page, the easier it will be for players to use your map to navigate the course. And greater accuracy will also lead to more accurate performance data that you'll get as the course ambassador for the folks who play your course. Let's add a new target for hole one, 
which is hugs the tree line right over here. And there is only this one target position, so I'm just going to call it A by default. There's no real B position on hole one. Now you'll see the fairway has automatically populated once I've added a tee pad and a target. However, there's a pretty significant left to right on this fairway. So I'm going to add this dog leg and use the little yellow dots and drag them to shape the actual shape of the hole. So you can see there, that's, that looks more like the actual fairway that people would be throwing. Let's add hole two, which again just has a single tee pad. So this one is a grass tee, and we're going to call it short and long simultaneously again. We'll add a target position, which you could do from the actions menu. There's a few different ways that you can do some of these things. And so let's add that target position. This is the A position where the basket is most commonly, and that is where the black hole basket is right now. It's just a straight shot across a wide open field, so there really is no need for a dog leg on this one. I'll add the B pin position as well, which is up on a, this dark green mound area. And right now, there is no target in that B position, so inactive is appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's active just to trigger a warning state. So you'll see here, if we go to hole 2, using the little navigational menu at the bottom of the page where you see all the hole numbers, there is this red warning. Multiple targets cannot share the same target type. There's only one black hole pro that's actually in position on this course, which we know because of that initial set of questions that you were asked in that first walkthrough. So one of these baskets should be inactive, and that's why there is this warning message. Let's go ahead and deactivate this B pin position because there is no actual physical target there, just a basket sleeve. And I'll go ahead and even mark it as temporary because that's more of a tournament-only basket position. You'll see that red dot and the warning message has now gone away. And you can use these little red dots as an indicator of which holes still need some love. You'll see a little red warning, two holes need review, and that'll just help you to know what you still need to do in order to get this map in good shape. So let's keep moving along. We'll go to hole three next. And on hole three, we do have two different um, tees. So we have a long tee, which is grass, and then we have a short tee, which is uh, more dirt. I would say. And there's only one pin position right here along the river. Really tough hole that kind of snakes through the woods and parallels the water. So you'll see again those um, fairways have automatically populated now that we have the tees and the target defined. And this is a good example of a hole where I would like to add some hole notes so that players know about the OB rules regarding this river specifically. The easiest way to add whole notes is for the whole, not just for a specific T. You could do this for a specific T by clicking on the T and then hitting edit. And for a T sign, if you have an image of the long T, uh, then you can feel free to go ahead and add that T sign uh, image for the long T. You can do the same for the short T, hitting the T icon and then hitting edit. But if you'd like to apply a whole note or a T sign image to the entire hole, meaning this will apply across all T's, both short and long for this hole, click on the whole number at the bottom of the page and then hit the edit icon, this diagonal pencil icon, and then you'll be able to add any whole notes and upload any T sign images that would apply to all of the T's on this hole. Now, when a player gets to hole three, they're going to see the hole notes and they'll know how to play this hole. So that is a really nice tool that will allow you to more accurately match your T signs and give better directions to the players who come to your course. Last things last, let's go over to hole four and we'll wrap this up. So hole four is a little bit of a walk to get to the T pad, but once you have it defined on the map, then it'll be easy for players to find because they'll be able to see all of these positions in their app. Again, this is a hole with just one actual T, so I'm calling it both short and long, and it goes straight across the field over to this corner in the trees. 
the A pin position is really the only pin position, and this one is a tone pole to wrap up the four hole round. Make sure you're associating it with the appropriate hole, and then the fairway will again populate automatically. If you're not satisfied with the positioning of this actual element, you can click on the T-pad or the target icon on the map and hit reposition. And then you can either drag this little yellow dot to a more appropriate place, or if you're on your phone, hit the use my location functionality to tap into your phone's GPS, and then you can really hone in on where exactly that T-pad or target is meant to be. I have pretty clear satellite imagery on this example course, but yours might not be quite as clear, and that is a good uh, opportunity to use that use my location functionality. One last thing that you might find useful, if you click on a T-pad or target and you hit the edit icon, you can even hit advanced settings to override with a latitude and longitude coordinate. If you have those and that you, you're confident in the accuracy of the latitude and longitude coordinates, then definitely feel free to use those to get everything exactly where they belong. That's everything. I've cleared out all the errors. There are no more holes that need review, and there are no more red dots on the little numbers at the bottom. So that is a really good sign that my map is in good shape for submission. You'll need to hit this blue review and submit changes for approval button in the upper right once your map is ready to go. And the UDISC team prides ourselves in prompt review for approval so we'll get your map approved within 24 to 48 hours or we'll get you some actionable feedback if we're not able to approve your initial map please give a brief reason for which changes you're submitting and then hit submit for approval and our team will be happy to help you can always reach out to help at udisc.com as well. That's H-E-L-P at udisc.com. And the Udisc customer success team will be more than happy to give you some more advanced help. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful and happy mapping.